Time to talk Regiments of the 4th Edition Dark Elves. Uh, but before that, I want to talk about the joys of trying to play some of these older armies back in the day, and the Dark Elves are a great example for this. Now, the majority of the units had models, or models you made them count as, during 4th Edition when the Dark Elves were launched. But a bunch of others weren't, and how they were released was really weird. Now, some, like the Dark Riders, would eventually get models released for them in 5th edition, as well as a few things like the Cauldron of Blood and a special character. But a whole bunch of others, while they had finished sculpts for these models, and they had for a while, they never got proper releases into stores, but were available at some Golden Demon Day events, but that was it. I don't get why this is, and the models I know this happened to are the Executioners and the War Hydra. And then there were some like the Dark Elf Scouts that just never got a model release. Yeah, never quite sure what this caused this. Some people say it was because there were issues with the moulds, so that when the models came out they had like really brittle parts, but yeah, can't confirm or deny this. I will say though, shout out to CollectingSettlementures.com for having some of these figures pictures still that I can show here. Made things a lot easier. Now. On to the regiments, and first up, it's the Cold War Knights. These are the mighty champions who have dedicated their lives to Cain. Although few in number due to the innate issues of learning how to ride a Cold One, e.g. the Cold One eating the rider, they are cold-hearted killers and the most deadly troops in the Dark Elf forces. Now, they were 38 points a model, and like all units, came in a minimum of 5 models with no maximum for the unit size. The rider was a movement 5, Weapon skill 5, Abyss skill 4, Strength 3, Toughness 3, Wounds 1, Initiative 7, Attacks 1, Leech Bait. And the Cold 1, Movement 8, Weapon skill 3, Abyss skill 0, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Wounds 1, Initiative 1, Attacks 2, Leech 3. Equipment wise, they came with swords, heavy armor, and shields base, and they could have lances of 4 points a model, and repeating crossbows for 6. They could also have a musician or standard for 76 points a model, and could take a magic standard. Now, they had some special rules, but they all come from the Cold War itself. Uh, first off, they're quite stupid and lazy, so suffer from the stupidity rule. Until they get into hand-to-hand -hand combat. The scent of blood now in their nostrils, they are now fully committed to fighting, and lose it for the rest of the game. Mm. Along with that, they cause fear due to their looks, and their hardened skills make them tricky to kill and give plus two bonus to the rider's armour, so they're coming in 2 plus overall, very nice. So yeah, the Cold War Knights with the tanky cavalry with that, and the Cold War's usually behaved, but hey, you'd have to keep that stupidity role in mind. Now they had another cavalry unit, the Dark Riders. The heralds of the Dark Elf armies who spread fear before them as they burn and pillage their target's weak positions. Mounted on black horses of glowing red eyes, they range ahead of the main army, spying on the enemy while causing mayhem and confusion. They were 25 points a model, and the rider was movement 5, weapon skill 4, but skill 4, strength 3, toughness 3, runes 1, neutral 6, attacks 1, leave shit 8. You know, I always wondered why they had the movement speed for these guys as they never got off their mount. Anyway, the steed was movement 9, weapon skill 3, but skill 0, strength 3, toughness 3, runes 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leave shit 5. They came with swords and light armour base, and could take spears for 2 points, and repeating crossbows for 6 points. Uh, along with a musician stand bearer for 50 points each. Now they had a few special rules as well. Uh, first, they are skirmishes, so no rank bonuses, but hard hit with shooting. They also had a special deployment rule, where after both armies were deployed, they got a free march move. And with a 9 inch move horsey, yeah that was 18 inches, so you can't say no to that. They're also expert riders, meaning they had no penalty for moving and shooting their crossbows. So yeah, worth getting those for them. Especially as their other rule, fire and flee, where if they are charged, they can choose to fire their crossbows, like if they choose to stand and shoot, but rather than standing still, they then run for it afterwards. This could be handy to keep them alive, as long as they rallied. Yeah, they were designed to be a small unit that ran around being an absolute nuisance, or quickly march ahead and take out a war machine for example. Not bad. Right, onto the infantry. And we're going to start off the Executioners of Harganef. They wield their axes with grim determination and murderous skill. 
As they hew their enemies apart, they cry praise to Cain, filling the air with a piercing rail that chills the blood of those who hear it, thinking they'll be the next one to face the executioner's axes. They will resort to one choice, and 16 points a model. Stats, movement 5, weapon skill 5, weapon skill 4, strength 4, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 6, attacks 1, leadership 8. They wielded double-handed axes and wore heavy armour. They could have a musician or standard for 32 points and could have magic banners. Now, they weren't just a bunch of two-handed wielding axe elves. No, they were really good at wielding those axes. This meant instead of getting a normal wound of one, they did D3 wounds. Yeah, monsters and characters didn't like getting hit by these guys. So yeah, they hit like a truck with those strength six axes. Uh, but because they're double-handed, they are striking last as well. So yeah, it had to be Campbell for them, because their heavy armor is only a 5 plus save. Still talking about elite imagery, next up, the Black Guard of Nagaroth. Gay guard the Tower of Cold where Malekith himself dwells. These warriors are marked by Cain for their grim master and willingly lay their lives upon the altar of battle when Malekith commands them to do so. They were also a zero to one choice and 15 points a model. Stat wise, they were movement 5, from skill 5, but skill 4, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 7, attacks 1, leadership 8. They wield halberds and have heavy armour. And the position was 30 points, as was a standard bearer, and they can also take a magic one. And that's really it for them. Yeah, just a slightly stronger elf squad, really, and if I'm honest... Considering how they look, I saw people proxy these guys as executioners more than actual blackguard. <laughs> now, on to the basic infantry, and they had a few options. The Dark Elf Warrior, Crossbowman, Spearman, and City Guard. I'm just showing the City Guard Regiment here because, well, we get the general idea. They all had the same stat line. Or movement 5, weapon skill 4, best skill 4, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 6, attacks 1, leadership 8. And the only real difference was the equipment by the City Guard who had a unique special rule. So, the Warriors were 10 points a model and they had swords and light armour. The Crossbowmen 13, and they gained a repeating crossbow. And the spearmen had spears for 11 points. They could all have musicians and standards for double their normal points, and shields of 1 point. Now what about the city guard then? Well, they had a combined formation. So, they were all spearmen, but for 2 points you could make them repeating crossbowmen. This meant you would have your front rank being crossbows to fire them, with the spearmen helping out in combat, being behind them, giving some nice versatility. This did change how casualties worked, as normally you just remove models from the back to show they were moving up, but with this unit, you removed them from the front to show the crossbowmen going first, or if it was a template weapon or blast, you remove them where it landed. So if a template got two spearmen and one crossbowmen, that is what you would remove, and then move a spearman up to fill the hole in the crossbowmen's line. So yeah, it basically came down to if you wanted them as a separate unit, or a combined one. All had solid pros and cons for both. Next up, it's the delightful ladies, the Witch Elves. They are cruel and deadly brides of Cain, as they are called. They drink potions of poisonous herbs before battle, driving them to a wild frenzy of bloodlust, while dipping their weapons in the same concoction to make them deadly to their foes. They are vicious curs when fighting, but their allies also tend to stay clear of them in case they get caught in the frenzy. They are 12 points a model, with movement 5, weapon skill 4, best skill 4, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 6, attacks 1, leadership 8. Equipment wise, they came with two hand weapons and could have light armour for two points. Honestly, that's a bit pointless, but oh well, up to you. They could also have a musician or standard for 24 points and allowed to take magic ones. Now, as mentioned, they are very, very frenzied, giving them even more attacks in combat. But their poison blades also helped out, giving them plus one strength in combat, which, yeah, made them a bit of a glass cannon as no protection, but all those attacks and that extra strength meant they could do a lot of damage. Next up, the scouts. And as I mentioned, they never got a model release, so have some artwork. Still, these Dark Elves tend to live in the mountain ranges around Nagwath, 
where they train their skills in the terrain to easily cross any hazardous environment. This lets them sneak into enemy territory to identify weaknesses, and if discovered or need to deal with guards and targets, they can do so quite effectively before the main force arrives. They were 13 points a model, and movement 5, rubber skill 4, rubber skill 5, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, industrial 6, attacks 1, leisure 8. They came with swords and repeated crossbows, and have light armour for 2 points. Also a musician and standard for 26 points a model. Special rules wise, they were skirmishers, and also suffered no penalties to moving in rocky or hilly terrain. They also had a special deployment rule where after all enemies are placed on the table, they can then be placed anywhere on the battlefield that is not in the opponent's deployment zone or in line of sight. So, sort of an alternative to Dark Riders in the right if you want a cheaper unit. Still, the lack of official models meant you never really saw them, as people didn't tend to proxy them either. Eh, yeah, shame really. Next up, the Black Orc Crusaders. The Black Arcs are massive floating fortresses. Uh, more than ships, but they are kept aloft by powerful dark magic spells. The Corsairs are the tenants of these ships, the deadly warrior knights sworn to carry out the orders of their Black Arcs ruler without question. They do this no matter the deed, and most relish in doing so. They were 12 points a model, and movement 5, bonus skill 4, bless skill 4, strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 1, initiative 6, attacks 1, leech of 8. They came with a sword and can have another for 1 point, and a repeating crossbow for 3 points a model. Musician and standard 24 points, and they can also have magical ones. They also come with the Sea Dragon Cloak, and made from the scales and hide of said creatures, but also other things lurking in the oceans. This gives them a 5 plus save, which is never able to be modified by save modifiers. This is helpful against most weapons, but if something in gnaw on the size like a spell or a cannonball to the face, yeah the cloak ain't gonna protect you against that. So yeah, a bit pricier than the basic infantry, but always having that 5 plus save most of the time, that makes a solid difference. Now finally onto the only non-Dark Elf Regiment, the Harpies. These beasts are scavengers that settled near this Dark Elf settlement of Carold Carr. Being scavengers and opportunists, they tend to follow Dark Elf armies and fleets as they go to war, preying upon the sick, weary and dying that the conflicts will bring. The Dark Elves tolerate them but do not control them, nor do the Harpies follow orders, it's more their presence that helps intimidate the Dark Elves' foes, and the Harpies get a free meal that they don't go for each other. They were a 0 to 1 choice and 15 points a model, and movement 4, weapon skill 4, but skill 0, strength 4, Toughness 4, Wounds 2, Initiative 2, Attacks 1, Leadership 6. They had no equipment, but could fly, making them get around quite easily. Also, being beasts, they had no access to magicians or standards, and no character could ever join them. Yeah, they were an interesting little unit. Could get around really well with the flies, and mm, two runes did make them a little tanky. And that's all the regiments the Dark Elves had at the time. Yeah, the basic imagery had some nice choices, and the execution of the rituals could do quite nasty things if they hit. And yeah, you can't say no to a couple of units of Cold One Cavalry. As long as they get the charge and don't fail that stupidity roll. Oh, just a pity about the whole thing of the executioner models, really, isn't it? Hmm. Well, next time we move on to their war machines and monsters. Well, monster, really, if you don't count the bestiary ones, which... I'm going to need to cover that in a video at some point, aren't I? Hmm. Oh well, see you then.